Good day everyone! Welcome back to another exciting and fun-filled learning on our Gen Bio class. I am Sir AJ and I'll be your teacher for today's discussion. Before anything else, let us have a short recap of our previous topic on mitosis and meiosis. As a part of our review, I'll be showing you different illustrations showing the stages of the different uh, types of cell division. Now let's have the first one. In this stage, the cell elongates and the daughter chromosomes are pulling away from each other. What do you think is that stage? Alright, that is correct. That is the anaphase stage. Next, the sister chromatids are now on the metaphase plate or in the equatorial plate. Okay, that is the metaphase stage. Good. Next one, the cell continues to elongate and the nuclear membrane surrounds the chromosomes. What stage is that? Okay, that is the telophase. And then the last one, alright, the early microtubule spindles and the centrioles as well as the chromatids. Okay, that is prophase. And of course, let us not forget the stages of meiosis, the meiosis 1 and the meiosis 2. Okay? Please be reminded that one of the distinguishing difference between a meiosis and the mitosis is that in the meiosis, we have what we call the recombination, the synapses or the crossing over, which a mitosis doesn't have. Right? Now, before proceeding to our new uh, topic, so this is the Ninoy Aquino International Airport or the NEIA. So, as we all know, despite his hassle, okay, especially before the pandemic, um, the Ninoy Aquino International Airport or the NEIA uh, functions with a high level of organization. People and objects come and go. They move from one uh, location to another. Okay? Um, they cross or they are contained within certain boundaries and they provide a constant flow as a part of a uh, larger activity. So analogously, uh, the cell membrane functions involve movement of or within the cell and across boundaries in the process of intracellular and uh, intercellular activities. And thus, for today, we will be discussing about the cell transport mechanisms or specifically the entry and the exit of materials in the cells. Let me share with you first our learning objectives. The first one is grab the structural components of the plasma membrane to relate the structure and its function. Second one is ravage transport mechanism. Number three, tabulate similarities and differences of different passive and active transport mechanisms. Okay, now let's talk about first the cell membrane and its functions. So as we all know, the cell membrane functions, it communicates with other cells, it separates the cytoplasm or the organelles from the outside environment, and it regulates the exchange of material. So we will be focusing on the third function, which is regulating the exchange of materials. Now, these are the components and the functions of the cell membrane. We have the phospholipid as the main fabric of the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. We have the cholesterol. It maintains the integrity and fluidity of the cell membrane. Integral proteins, the transport of substance through membrane uh, for cell adhesion, structural support, and for receptor function. For peripheral proteins, it's for cell recognition. And the last, we have the carbohydrates. Its main function is also for cell recognition, effective interaction with the aqueous environment. Now, this is a creative uh, visualization or presentation of the cell membrane. So, we have here the different uh, parts. We have the cholesterol, right? Okay. The yellow chains. Okay. We also have the glycolipids. We also have the carbohydrates, the blue chain attached on the proteins. We have the proteins, the integral proteins, and the peripheral proteins together with the phospholipid by leg. Right. Now, this is what we call the fluid mosaic model, which is introduced by Jonathan Singer and Bart Nicholson in 1972. So, what is that fluid mosaic model? So, this model actually uh, postulates that the membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer with a mosaic of various kinds, such as proteins, carbohydrates, uh, cholesterol, and some uh, chains, right? 
So, the components of the cell membrane, starting with the post polypes, it has the hydrophilic head or the polar head and the hydrophobic tail, which is the non polar. So, it attracts water uh, for the hydrophilic and it repels water for the hydrophobic tail. We also have the proteins, specifically the peripheral proteins and the integral membrane proteins, which aid some molecules to enter or pass through the cell. And then we also have the carbohydrates or the carbohydrate chains which are attached in the cell membrane. And with that, let's now discuss the first type of transport which is the passive transport. These are actually the movement of ions and molecular substances across the cell membrane without the need of energy input. Take note of that phrase without the need of energy input. Now, for the passive transport, we have the simple diffusion. It is the random movement of molecules of a substance from a region of a higher concentration to a region of lower concentration. Now, this is just as a, uh, an example of the illustration showing a simple diffusion. Okay. Next, another illustration. So, as you can see, from a higher concentration to a lower concentration until they reach the homeostasis are the equilibrium. Okay? And then, these are some of the factors that affect the function. Number one, extent of the concentration region. Second one, mass of the molecules diffusing. Third, the temperature. Four, the solvent density. Five, solubility. And then the last, the distance travel. So we can also apply the fusion and the real life situation such as, number one, the plants absorb carbon dioxide from the environment and it passes through the leaf. Our lungs also absorb oxygen through diffusion. Plants release the oxygen produced during the photosynthesis with the aid of diffusion as well and the passage of amino acids and glucose into the blood. Okay. Now let's have the second type which is the facilitated diffusion. The passage of molecules through the cell is uh, aided by the certain carrier proteins. The carrier proteins change shape as they form channels to facilitate the passage of the solutions into the cell. So this is now the illustration showing the facilitated diffusion. We have the protein channels or the carrier proteins. And then we also have the next one which is the osmosis. Basically, it's the movement of water through a semi-permeable membrane. It allows water molecules to pass through but prevents the passage of some solutes. And then, this is now the uh, illustration showing the osmosis okay, with the semi-permeable membrane as well. Now, tonicity describes how an extracellular solution can change the volume of a cell by affecting the osmosis. Osmolarity describes the total, total solute concentration in the sol uh, solution. The movement of water in a solvent plate in solutions of varied concentrations are of three kinds. The first one is the hypotonic solution. It contains a lower concentration of dissolved materials or solutes. It has some more water than the cell that causes the cell to burst or in the process called cytolysis. The next one is the hypertonic solution. It contains a higher concentration of solutes than the cell. It has less water than the cell that causes the cell to shrink or in the process called plasma. Molasses. And then the third type is the isotonic solution. It has the same concentration as the contents of the cell. Hence, the same number of water molecules enter and leave the cell, causing the cell to retain its sides. Okay, so this is the uh, creative presentation of the different tonicity, the hypertonic, the isotonic, and the hypotonic solution. And then let's now move on to active transport. It required the use of cells energy um, in the form of anhydrosine triphosphate. Energy is used to move against the gradient. So the gradient would be from lower to a higher concentration. Now, the cell has to spend energy stored in the chemical bonds of adenosine triphosphate or the ATP. So, a very good example of the active transport is the sodium and potassium ions which are actively pumped across the cell. So, this is now the illustration showing the difference between a diffusion, a facilitated diffusion, so from higher to lower concentration. And then, in this type of transport, we use the active transport from lower to a higher concentration to the aid of the energy which is the ATP. 
and then we also have the primary active transport, the sodium and the potassium bomb, and then the energy as well, and then the secondary active transport. Let's have now the carrier contains. We have three types. We have the uniporter, the symporter, and the antiporter. For the uniporter, it carries one specific ion or molecule. Symporter carries two different ions or molecules. Antiporter carries two different ions or molecules but in different directions. Uh, in this diagram, we could see the difference between the three carrier contains. A uniporter, one molecule in one direction. Symporter, we have two different kinds of ions or molecules on the same direction. While for antiporter, two different molecules and also in different directions. Now, let's have the last one which is the bulk transport. The materials that are actually too large to get into the cell through passive or active transport processes enter the cell in a different way or in this way. Now, uh, for bulk transport, we have the endocytosis which involves the entry into the cell of materials that are too large to get in by near the fusion. It has two types, the phagocytosis and the phenocytosis. For phagocytosis, it's also known as the cell eating, the process by which the cell engulfs or takes in solid particles that are large, too large to enter in the cell. For phenocytosis, it literally means cell drinking, the process of taking in fluids by the cells. Okay, so these are now the diagram of the three types of endocytosis, the phago, the fin, and we have the last one, which is the receptor mediated endocytosis, which means we need the protein uh, called platrin, which serves as, uh, which codes into vesicle, alright? It targets specific molecules or ions, okay? And then, for the last one, we have the exocytosis. Exo means exit. It is the reverse of endocytosis. It is the process by which cell expels large molecules such as proteins and polysaccharides, or with the help of the vesicles from the Golgi apparatus. And this is now the diagram of the exocytosis. Okay? And then for our key concepts, okay, so this is now the summary, the transport methods. We have the diffusion, the osmosis, facilitated diffusion, the primary, the secondary active transport, the phago, the phenocytosis, and the receptor mediated endocytosis, as well as the different materials they are you are transporting. Okay. Now for your assignment. Uh, a simple research. So, both of the regular intravenous solutions administered in medicine, the normal saline and the lactated ringer solutions are actually isotonic. So, why do you think this is important? Alright, you're going to answer it based on your research and upload it in our respective Google Drive. Okay, so do you have now any questions regarding transport mechanisms? Okay, if you don't have, I think that's all for today. So, thank you so much and God bless you.